What's up, YouTube? This is 82 and 0. Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about the 1970-71 Milwaukee Bucks. And in many people's eyes, this is the greatest team of the first 25 years of the NBA. Some would say the 72 Lakers. Some say this team. But regardless... I don't think you can leave them off the top five greatest NBA teams of all time. Let me explain why. Now, it's important you look back. Oscar Robertson is probably the greatest all-around point guard prior to this. He's a great defender, great post moves, very athletic, great rebounding guard, and he just didn't have any help when he was playing in Cincinnati. He played there from 1960 to 1970, and he put up incredible, incredible numbers there. Um, and he even won MVP. And this this was the era when it was centers that were running the league, and he was a point guard winning MVP. But if you look at his tenure in Cincinnati... He put up 29 points, 10 assists, and 9 rebounds. And he was a very efficient guard for that era. I mean, he was one of the first guards to average over 50% field goal shooting. And in Cincinnati, he averaged, for his career, 48%. Now, he was starting to have friction with the Cincinnati Royals. Specifically, their coach, Bob Cousy. And Bob Cousy, I don't think a lot of people realize this, was actually a player coach in the 69-70 season. Yes, you heard me right. Bob Cousy, the Celtics players in the 1950s, came back and played seven games at the age of 41 because he wanted to prove that he could still play. And he kind of embarrassed himself, putting up 33% field goal shooting. Now, Oscar, I did a video on this. I don't want to get in depth in this. Uh, Oscar was instrumental in creating NBA free agency. You wouldn't have free agency if it weren't for Oscar Robertson, probably. Because before then, if you were drafted by a team... You played there your whole career unless they were nice enough to trade you when you wanted to be traded. Otherwise, it's too bad. Retire. And Oscar, I'm not saying he created free agency on his own. I'm saying his pushback against the league and his lawsuit helped to create free agency. But he, uh, he would end up getting traded to the Milwaukee Bucks. And this is one of the most lopsided trades in NBA history. Um, <laughs> the Royals didn't get much back in return for Oscar. I guess they looked at it like, we just got to get rid of Oscar. We'll take anything. But uh, they traded him for Charlie Polk and Flynn Robinson. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so... Where was the Bucks organization standing prior to this? Well, they were a very new expansion franchise. Their first season was 68-69. And they, they only won 27 games. But the following season, for the 69-70 season, they won a coin flip. It was either them or Phoenix that were going to get the number one pick. And... You know, many years, many other drafts, the number one pick or the number two pick might not as matter as much as this. You were getting a generational player, a top three player of all time. So either franchise was going to have a championship, in my opinion. I mean, the Suns still made the finals in 76. So had Kareem played there, he probably... Would have got them a championship. But the Bucks won the coin toss. And Kareem Abdul-Jabbar would be drafted the Milwaukee Bucks. And he led them to a 56-26 and 26 turnaround for 
And like I said, they didn't have Oscar Robertson yet. That wouldn't be until the 70-71 season, <laughs> where they would turn it around again and improve to a 66-16 and record with their new duo in Oscar Robertson and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. And this team, there were 17 leagues, there were 17 teams in the league back then. They were the number one rated offense, and they were the number one rated defense. And before I did this video, I was kind of researching all the, I, I'm not saying I researched every single team in NBA history, that'd take way too long. But all the teams that I want to do videos on, like the 96 Bulls, 17 Warriors, 86 Celtics. The 71 Bucks and the 96 Bulls are the only team, only two teams that I've found. And if somebody wants to correct me if I'm wrong, they can go ahead and down below and comment. They're the only teams I found to win a championship and be the number one rated offense and the number one rated defense. They were that good. The 72 Lakers were the second best defensive rated. Uh, the 17 Warriors were the second best defense. So pretty close, but. So anyways, they had Kareem Abdul-Jabbar in his second season winning MVP. He put up 31.7 points per game, 16 rebounds per game, and they didn't keep track of blocks yet, but I'm guessing him to be around two or three blocks per game. Maybe as high as four. We don't know. Uh, he he shot 57% field goal shooting with his crazy, crazy skyhook shot. And they were coached by Larry Costello, who he himself was a player. He played with Syracuse or the Philadelphia 76ers. For most of his career and he was a player coach at one point with Philly uh, back in night he was a player coach and he actually won a championship in 1967 with the 76ers and that was one of the greatest NBA teams of all time prior to this um, I think I quoted wrong he wasn't a player coach I was thinking of someone else I'm sorry but he started coaching Milwaukee in the 68-69 season. And in my opinion, he's a super underrated coach. His, um, I know he was inducted into the Hall of Fame as a contributor in 2022. But in my opinion, I think he should be a Hall of Fame coach. So not only did they have a great coach, they had a great executive and Ray Patterson, you know, making the move to get Oscar Roberts in there. Although Oscar was out of his prime, he was still a very valuable player. He was 32 years old at the time, and his scoring numbers dipped, obviously, because he was playing on a better team. But he put up 19.4 points per game, 5.7 rebounds per game, and 8.2 assists per game. But that wasn't their only scoring threats they had Bob Dandridge who was an 18.4 point per game scorer eight rebound guy who shot 50 percent then they had John McCocklin who himself was a 53 percent field goal shooter who averaged 15 points per game then you had guys like Greg Smith who was a great rebounder he averaged 11.7 points per game Seven rebounds per game. Then you had guys like Bob Boozer coming off the bench. You had a great defender in Lucius Allen coming off the bench, who was a really good thief. <laughs> he had a lot of steals in his career. Um, although they didn't keep track of steals until the 73-74 season, he got as high as 2.2 steals per game. So you had him and Bob Boozer. That was pretty much their... Um, main bench guys, but you know, they also had guys like Dick Cunningham, uh, Jeff Webb, you know, it was a great team. They were, they were really good at team defense and helping each other out to guard the man. Now, 
they at the time had the longest winning streak in NBA history, which is uh, was obviously broken the next year by the Los Angeles Lakers. The Lakers would have a 33 game win streak, and they had a 20 game win streak, which is actually the fifth all time. And you got to understand, back then the Bucks played in the Western Conference. They weren't in the Eastern Conference yet. So they would be have to be matched up against the Lakers. But in the first round, they defeated the San Francisco Warriors in five games. Before the second round, which was the then conference finals, they were matched up with the Los Angeles Lakers. And to me, this is a classic, classic series because you got to see Wilt Chamberlain and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar battle it out. It'd be great to see Wilt in his prime up against Kareem. You know, it's not the same, but we got to see Wilt block Kareem's skyhook. I mean, how many other players can you name that blocked Kareem's skyhook? It was a great series. But the Bucks would handle him in five before going to the finals. And this was one of the most lopsided finals in NBA history. They defeated the Baltimore Bullets in four games. And I think it should be noted, this Bullets team, uh, Baltimore Bullets, they weren't at their full strength when they were playing. Um, this wasn't their later Bullets team in the late 70s. Uh, the late 70s, you know, they had Wes Unsold. I mean, they still had Wes Unsold this year, but... They had a good duo in Wes Unsold and Elvin Hayes. They didn't have Elvin Hayes yet. Uh, they had Wes Unsold, Fred Carter, Earl Monroe. So I don't consider them their full potential, what they would become. And Gus Johnson was on the team, but he only played two games in that series. But I don't ever put an asterisk on a series, you know. Injuries are part of the game. You can't rewrite history. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar averaged 27, point point, 27 points per game and 18 rebounds. Oscar Robertson had 23 points and 9 assists. And Bob Dandridge had 20 points and 9 rebounds. That's a great trio right there. That's a trio that doesn't get talked about enough. And their efficiency was insane. Kareem averaged 60% field goal shooting. Oscar had 52. And Dandridge had 52. Why are they brought up in the conversation of, you know, the greatest trios in NBA history? I, I really don't get it. But this was just such a dominant season. So Kareem would be the NBA scoring champion that year. He was also the MVP and the finals MVP. And obviously he was all NBA. And in my opinion, right, I know a lot of people maybe would disagree with me. I said in my last video with the 96 Bulls, I have the 96 Bulls as the number one greatest team of all time. And what, what I mean by greatest, I'm not looking at the impact they had. I mean, sure, that's a factor, you know, their popularity or whatever, and what they did for the game. I'm more looking at, how I think they would match up against other teams. I think the 96 Bulls are the greatest NBA team of all time. And, you know, anybody can have a dis disagreement with me. You know, feel free to debate me in the comments. You know, keep it respectful. Uh, 96 Bulls, number one. Number two, I'd have the 2017 Warriors. Number three, I'd have the 72 Lakers. But number four, this, for me, this is what I've always struggled with now. I go back and forth. Sometimes I'll have the 71 Bucks, and sometimes I'll have the 87 Lakers. But I think for the purpose of this video, I'm going to put the 71 Bucks as the number fourth greatest team of all time. Um, it, it, it was close for me. It was them or the 87 Lakers. You know, some people could even make an argument for the 86 Celtics. But is what it is so this is the probably the greatest team of the first 25 years uh, 
And it was great to see Oscar Robinson get a championship. He probably, I mean, come on, let's be real here. He never would have got a championship if he was if he wasn't traded. Uh, there was just wasn't there weren't going to get any free agents to play with him. And you know this team kind of it's sad they never ran it back. They only had one other finals appearance together, Kareem and Oscar, and that was in 1974. The team would lose in seven games to the Boston Celtics, and. <laughs> it was crazy because those games were really close in that series. Look up game six, how close that was. They literally won just by one point. So Kareem kind of dominated the 70s, but he didn't win a lot of championships. He only won one. And I'm not knocking him. I'm just saying it for the purpose of the video. You know, there's a lot of factors why he didn't. But I think what made this team so great was, has, had I mentioned their team defense, what also made them great was their ball movement and their passing. They ran a lot of good, smart plays. And they had a lot of great shooters on this team. Very efficient scorers. Like I said, Oscar, Dandridge, and John McCoughlin, you know, Greg Smith. Lucius Allen was pretty efficient for a guard back in that era. The only guy I can really say wasn't efficient, uh, I mean, uh, Jeff Webb, maybe Dick Cunningham, they didn't have the greatest field goal percentage. But I think this team could match up with any era. So let me know what you guys think down below. Thanks for watching.